Hi everybody and welcome to our Facebook Live. If you don't know me, my name is Chris with Daily Dose of DIY. I apologize, I am running a little bit late. We are having, we were having some technical difficulties and you all know how well I like tech. Speaking of the tech, um, if you comment link in the comments, when you come in, say hello, hi Sally. Hi Susan, um, if you comment link, it will work this week, I'm pretty sure. We tested it and tested it and tested it some more. If you comment link, you will get in Messenger the links that you need for all the supplies you'll need for this live and also um, just where to find everything, get the free SVG files. It's also in the description of this video. So you can always come back and look at the description and it is the URL is dailydoseofdiy.com slash supplies. So it's also kind of easy to remember too. Hey, Wendy, how are you doing? Glad to see you here. So tonight we are going to make animal print door hangers. And I think they're so, so cute. Here is one that is a cow. I don't have the inside finished yet, but this is a cow print. Let me switch to this camera. And then I have one that's a cheetah print. And these are the SVGs or leopard print. Do you call it cheetah or leopard? I know there's a difference, but I tried to find the difference today and I didn't have much luck in the limited time I had to look. Um, and this print, we're going to do this one tonight. It's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to do the one tonight is black and brown. This one is done in white and gray. And then this is the blank I have to work with. I, you will find um, a link to these in that um, description where you comment link in the description or if you comment link and get it in your messenger. I have these available for sale in my shop. They're 15 inch around and a quarter inch thick and that's what we're going to be working with tonight. So to start, you want to clean off your board. I already see glitter on mine. Imagine that. Oops, I lost my camera for a second. I accidentally knocked the place where you attach it. And like I said, we're going to do this one in um, brown and black. So I'm going to get the base started really fast. Find my brush. So it has time to dry while we do the rest. And this is also in the supplies list. I'm using Deco Art Vintage Effect Wash in the color brown. I'm just going to squirt some on here and get it covered because our base is going to be brown. What this does, if you've never worked with this or um, any kind of what I call paint stain or water-based stain, is it goes on kind of like a stain, but it dries super, super fast and it is not at all smelly like normal stain is. Make sure you get your edges too. My brush, I don't think I put in the description, but it is a makeup brush. If you can see on camera, it helps when you're doing um, big surfaces like this to get it on without leaving so many brush marks. So I was listening to a podcast this week, and I think it was with a girl from um, Southern Adornaments. I can't remember her name, though. And she mentioned, she does all kinds of door hangers, but she mentioned um, that most people in the North did not know what a door hanger was in her experience. So I wanted to know if you guys know what a door hanger is, if you do. Let me know in the comments because I'm in the north and I know what they are, but I wasn't sure if 
um, that's just because I'm in the craft space or if everybody knows or not. It is, if you don't know, um, just like you would hang a door wreath. I keep hitting that connection, I'm sorry. Only instead of a wreath, you hang um, a door hanger. And there's all the different kinds of cutouts and different shapes of wood that you can do. Okay, while that is drying, I'm going to head over and show you my screen. What screen do I have up? I think I have up my Facebook page. I do. And here is that supplies page, dailydosediy.com slash supplies. So you'll be able to sign up and get the free SVG files. And that is what I wanted to show you here. When you land in the SVG library, they're all in alphabetical order. I don't have a picture up for these yet, but you want to click where it says animal print door hanger, and that will automatically download those SVG files to your um, device. Now, what to do with them in Cricut Design Space. If you need help downloading and uploading, just let us know, but I'm not going to go into all of that tonight since every device is different. Let me make this bigger. When you get the SVGs, you'll get them both ways, one already split and one full circle. If you do the already split one, it has a four inch gap in there and it's already sized for these 15 inch door hangers. So of course you can resize them in design space. But we're gonna do something a little different tonight and we're gonna use the full circle because I'm gonna show you how you can also make it your own. So when you bring it in, I'm going to come down to the bottom here and reduce the size a little bit so we can it's not reducing the size of the circle, it's just reducing the size of the screen so we can see the whole circle at once. I'm going to leave it the same size though so it fits my circle perfectly. And then I'm going to click on Shapes. Sorry, I have to move some of my controls out of the way to see it. And then a square. I'm going to go to the top and just change the color of the square so it's a little easier to see. And then this little lock button here, you can unlock that. If you leave it locked, the square stays perfectly square. But if you unlock it, you can stretch it out and make it um, more into a rectangle shape. So this is a 15 inch circle, as I mentioned, and half of 15 inches is seven and a half. So I want to make my rectangle about seven and a half wide. And then I'm going to select both the rectangle and um, that animal print circle design and go on the top to align. And we're going to align top, there it is. And that puts the square and that circle perfectly matched together on the top. So it's going to, what we're going to do is cut it in half. So once I click the slice button, did I move too fast? It all disappeared. There we go. It cuts that in half for me. That's what slice does. So then you can see all these different um, types that we don't really need, but you can make some cool shapes with slice. And I'm going to get rid of all of those because I just want to cover half of the circle. So you could do a quarter, three quarters, a half, however you want to make your design. That's why I gave you a full circle of it. And then you're going to click the Make It button when you're ready. It will, since this, if you're doing a 15 inch or an 18 inch or a big door hanger, you will need your 24 inch cut mat. And it, that's what it's telling you at the top, just giving you a warning to use your big cut mat. And then once your uh, maker is connected, if you have a Cricut Explorer, you can turn your dial to vinyl. From your maker, you can choose under Browse All Materials Stencil Vinyl or Matte Vinyl. I find it doesn't really matter. They both cut the same. So then once you have that selected, 
it tells you to use your fine point blade and to go ahead and get it loaded. Let's switch screens again. So let me try to get that off of there. I am not going to actually cut it tonight because that takes a long time. I did cut it out of um, stencil vinyl, which is also in that supply list, dailydoseofdiy.com slash supplies. The blue vinyl, and it cuts just, if you've ever cut vinyl before, it cuts just like vinyl. Regular vinyl, permanent vinyl, or removable vinyl. It's a little bit thinner and not quite as sticky though, so that we can um, easily remove it. I did not, however, weed it yet, so we're going to do that really quick. Just going to trim off the extra. Get the outer edge off. So how is everybody doing tonight? Let me know in the comments what you're working on. I'm actually going to check something on my phone real quick because I am not seeing anything. I want to see if I'm missing any comments or what's going on. Hi Marina. Okay, I see your comment, so we must be good. I will keep going then. It's a quiet night. Last time I went live, of course I didn't email everybody because I was running behind. So if you're on my email list, my apologies, you didn't get the notification. I did remember to send a text this week though. So now I'm getting the transfer tape. I'm using Oracle transfer film. which is also on that supply list. You got the text? Good. I think before I would send, um, schedule the text to go out before people could sign up and if you signed up after I scheduled it, then the text didn't go to you. I figured out that issue too. All kinds of text problems with going live sometimes. Okay, so to put on um, transfer tape, we need this to get to transfer tape so we can get to the vinyl to the wood round easily. We don't so we don't do it piece by piece. So I always peel off the back section and then just put one little piece on the edge of my vinyl so that I can in one kind of one continuous move 
as you're pulling off the back, push down the front, and that helps you not get bubbles or end up with a big sticky mess because you're pulling off the back at the same time as you're laying it down. So it's nice and flat. Once you get it on, then you'll need your scraper tool to scrape it down. This is also called burnishing. So if you ever hear somebody say to burnish it, that is what they mean, to scrape it. Usually, if you do the back, it comes off pretty easy and then peel the backing off of your transfer tape. And most of the time you won't get anything that sticks, but you should go slow. There's one that's stuck. Sometimes it doesn't want to come off the backing. Like here's one that doesn't want to just push it back down and keep going. But if you go super fast, you might end up tearing it. Okay, this is pretty dry now. That is what I like about paint stain. Still might pull some up, but we're going to keep going. If you um, don't give it quite enough time to dry, then you can peel, it will peel off when you remove your stencil, but we're just going to take that chance. You might want to let yours dry a little longer, but so I can show you, we're just going to go ahead and do it. Then you push all of this down. I threw my scraper on the floor, or I would be using that. And then slowly peel back your transfer tape. Another issue with it not waiting a little longer for it to dry is it will be harder to get the vinyl to stick, but I think we'll be okay. You should also remove your transfer tape instead of pulling up. Hold it back. So it's just kind of peeling off slowly. Well, right there, it really didn't want to come off. Most of the time, once you get it started, it's pretty good. Kim, yes, this will be available for viewing later. I will, um, almost as soon as it's over, it's on the Facebook page, so you can see it again. And then I will take the recording and also put it on the, my YouTube channel. And um, then I'll definitely email everybody and let everybody know it's there, since I didn't get a chance to email today. Maybe I should have painted the base coat before we went live. I was trying to get everything else prepped. And then Cricut didn't want to cooperate with me earlier. That is what put me behind. Aw, Kim, you're so nice. <laughs> okay, it is off. And then I'm going to save this transfer I'm just going to drape it over my maker and save it for the next thing we got to put on. It did get a little squiggly though, so I'm going to go back and down and push it down with my um, fingers. Let's see if we can get it a... Yeah, it's sticking pretty good. And this normally, like I said, wouldn't be an issue, but because I'm going fast, it made it hard to stick because the paint isn't a hundred percent dry, but we're going with it anyway. The next thing I'm going to do for this design, you don't have to do it for all of them. It just depends on how yours you want yours to look, but I want the rest to stay brown. Like I did not do that. Let me grab this one again. For the cow, I didn't tape it off because it just went from the design into a black center. But I want, I'm going to paint these black and I want the rest to stay brown. So I'm going to take my painter's tape and seal off this area so that my black paint doesn't go down to where I want it to stay brown. You can just line it right up with your stencil 
edge. It's not that hard to do. Now we are ready to paint. There is still some spots over here that don't want to stick. So what I'm going to do for stencils is use a sponge. Let me see. We're going to use black paints. Yes, I can put it down here. I have it in Deco Art. I forgot to grab a paper plate, so I'm looking around to see what I can grab. We use this backing. It was on the floor. Oh, I guess that's still transfer tape. We're still gonna use that backing. Okay, so I'm gonna squirt some paint out on this. And you take your edge of your sponge and dip it in the paint. And then you want to blob most of that paint off. You want the paint to soak into your sponge, but you don't want it to be a blob on your sponge. If it looks, let me try this view. If it looks like a blob on your sponge like this, you have way too much paint on there. It should be soaked into your sponge these are makeup sponges, so like you're putting on makeup, but not blobbed. If you have a blob of paint, the number one reason for stencils to bleed is because there's too much paint, either on your brush or on your sponge or whatever you're using. If you use too much paint, it will bleed. That's not what I wanted to do. Wrong button. That was from the last slide. Okay, here we are. If you put too much paint on, it will bleed. So, dip your sponge in the paint, dab most of the paint off, and then just dab on your stencil up and down really fast. This is black over brown, so it should only take one coat. You might have to do three or four coats if you're using a lighter color, but it will be worth it to not have bleeds. I used to teach um, the Mod Podge method or the seal your stencil method, like where you put Mod Podge on and then, let me move this out of the way. Seal your stencil with Mod Podge and then paint, but so many people put too much Mod Podge and too much paint on still that the stencils blood. So I found that this way is a way that everybody can seem to get without um, making it bleed. And it goes faster than you would think, especially when you're using black.
Hi Marina, the board is a quarter inch thick. It is 15 inches wide and I have these in my shop. If you um, comment link, it will work this week. You'll get links um, in Messenger or you can go to dailydoseofdiy.com slash supplies. That link is also in the description and it will take you there. Of course, you can find these on Etsy and other places too, different sizes and different thicknesses. I like the quarter inch thick. I'll show you the thickness there. Because the half inch is um, kind of heavy and I've had them fall off of doors and I just don't like the heaviness, I guess, of a half inch. And then the eighth inch, which is a size smaller than the quarter inch, is flimsy. So it warps really easy and is easy to fold. So yes, if you're just coming on, if you type in link, you'll also get the supply list of everything that I'm using. The link to these boards and all that fun stuff. There's my weeding tool. So once it is done and another um, benefit, I still see some wetness but a benefit of the sponge method and not using too much paint is it dries super fast. So once it's done, you can go ahead and peel the stencil off. It's generally when pulling stencils off, best to go from top to bottom or against the grain of the wood. The grain of our wood is going sideways and that will help it um, not pull up with the background color. Of course, since I didn't let mine dry 100%, it might pull up some anyway. But so far, it looks good. Toss that to the side, and then I'm going to use my weeding tool to pop out some of those centers we had. There's a spot, I can't, don't know if you can see that on camera, that it pulled up the background. Because I went side to side. Isn't that cool? I love it too. I saw it, um, I don't know where, I remember where I saw the first picture. Probably on Pinterest. And I'm the type of person that when I see something, I'm like, I can do that. So I immediately had to make them in animal prints. I just thought it was so cool. And then the other one I did, I did that one in gray. I'll show you that if you just came on in gray and white. I did it down the leopard print on the um, top and bottom and then down the center gray. I'm going to grab that real quick. That was my hot blue one. I just feel like I am a hot mess today. I was trying to cut out wood to do wood for these signs. That didn't work at all. Nothing's really worked well today. Okay, so that there is the black and brown. And then I'm gonna have that be the bottom. So I have another stencil. You'll also find in your, um, the SVG file will come with a hello and a welcome. So I'm going to put the hello on in black. Lost my scraper. We'll use this. Sometimes you have to improvise. And then this is not so super sticky that you can, um, I think I might have the hello come down a little bit into the animal print. You can um, position it around however you want. I generally just eyeball it for centered and where I want it. Might have to hold it up a second so I can see. Oh, 
we'll call that good enough for today. And then when it's where you want it, smooth it down. You can see it's sticking a little bit better now because my base has had a few extra minutes to dry. So now it is staying nice and good as it should. And then this, um, I don't know what I did with the backing, but I'll save it. One of the things I wanted to let you know I love about Oracle transfer tape, I usually use the shelf liner, but if you can get your hands on some Oracle, you can reuse it so many times. That was the second time I used it. I could probably use this sheet 10 times, and it's not that expensive. It's way better than the Cricut brand. Don't tell Cricut I said that, though. Okay? <laughs> that will be our little secret. So I'm going to do the hello in black also, and I have the hello come down, so it's going into the animal print. I feel like when I'm dabbing, I'm shaking the camera. Marina, yes. This one is by Deco Art. It's called Vintage Effect Wash. They also have a um, line that's colored stain. It's getting kind of hard to find with all the supply issues we've had the last year. Um, so check your Hobby Lobby, or, well, I linked to this. I found this on Amazon. So it still works. It's called a vintage wash, but it still works good as a stain. It works good like their colored stains work. So what it is is it's not really a stain. So you don't have that smelly, and you don't have to wait, like, the 24 hours. Like, if we stain this for real, you would have to wait 24 hours, not a few minutes. And then um, it's water-based, so it goes on. It looks like a stain, but it's really paint. Another company that does that well is Sea Paints. I think I have their link in the supplies, too, for a color I used on the white, on the cow print. You're very welcome. So again, if you're just catching this part when you stencil, make sure your paint is absorbed into the sponge. You don't want globs of paint on the end of your sponge so your stencil does not bleed. And once you have it done, then you can peel the stencil off. You could also do this if you um, end vinyl. Just put the vinyl down and leave it. I tend to like painted signs better. But if you're not a painter, then you can do this in vinyl instead of stencils and paint. So I had the hello go down into the animal prints. I'm not sure if I like it that way or not. I should have maybe put it up a little bit, but I have a bow I wanted to make sure I had room for too. I think maybe with some touch up, it's, it looks just like a little funny there and in there. It might look okay. At least now you know what that experiment looks like if you want to try it or not. So once you get your lettering on there, um, I made, for a door hanger you need a hang place too. So I made a beaded rope, it's kind of hard to see on the brown, for the back. And what you do for that is just find your center and then hot glue however you're going to hang it. You can use ribbon, rope, um, whatever you have or want to use to hang it. My hot glue gun goes this far, exactly. 
So I guess that's as far as we're going with it. I would just touch it up with um, freehand with paint and a paintbrush is what I'll probably do. Work with it until it looks good. But honestly, on other ones, I wanted to see what it would look like. I don't want that hot glue to my... I would probably just move the hello up so there's a gap and it's not going down into the print. It might have looked okay, too, if it was white or a different color. So, we have our beaded hanger. And then I made um, a ribbon, just a bow, <laughs> out of some of the ribbons I have. I'm going to hot glue the heck out of the back of that. And stick it in there. <laughs> I can't tell if my beads stayed or not. They did. I'm not always the best at letting stuff dry. And there it is finished. Let's try the screen. It does so cute. I love it. Even with the hello too low. And then the ones I didn't finish if you didn't see those yet. Here's an animal print with the centers cut out. When you get the SVGs, you'll have to go back and see the beginning of the video. You'll either, there's two options, either a circle so you can make your own or with the centers already cut out. So you can do the center and then wording over here. Thank you, Wendy. Once again, to get the links to all the supplies I use, you can comment link. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, it'll be in the description or pinned in the comments. Or you can just simply go to dailydoseofdiy.com slash supplies. That will give you a list of all the supplies I used to make these. I think they're adorable. And I thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Stella. Thank you, Nicole. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will... Um, get to them. I will come back and answer them after I clean up this gigantic mess I made. <laughs> Spray a top coat on. Um, I usually coat it in, I guess we're this camera now, in Mod Podge sealer. So yes, you probably do want to seal it, especially if it's hanging on a door. Um, my door faces the east and I have kind of a porch so it doesn't get a lot of sun, but I know some some doors get super a lot of sun, so you'll want to keep it protected and um, from water and sun and rain. Thank you, Nancy. I think I covered everything. Any other questions? Like I said, just leave it in the comments, and I will come back and get them. Comment links to get the links to everything, and I will see you probably in two weeks. Next week, I'm booked every night of the week. Also, let me know what you want the next tutorial to be on. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, I'll pick something, I'm sure, but if you guys have a special request, let me know. Thank you, Marina. Here, I will put it back on that screen again. There is our finished product that we made tonight. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in two weeks.